Good afternoon and a warm welcome to you all to Sunday at four, our weekly messages from the Bible. Now we've been looking at some of the parables of Jesus, the stories that he told with a spiritual meaning. And today we come to the last in the series. Now the parable that we're going to look at today is actually quite dark in that it contains violence and murder. And so let's read it. It's in Luke chapter 20 verses 9 to 19. He went on to tell the people this parable. A man planted a vineyard, rented it to some farmers and went away for a long time. At harvest time he sent a servant to the tenants so they would give him some of the fruit of the vineyard. But the tenants beat him and sent him away empty-handed. He sent another servant, but that one also they beat and treated shamefully and sent away empty-handed. He sent still a third, and they wounded him and threw him out. Then the owner of the vineyard said, What shall I do? I will send my son, whom I love. Perhaps they will respect him. When this tenant saw him, they talked the matter over. This is the heir, they said. Let's kill him, and the inheritance will be ours. So they threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. What then will the owner of the vineyard do? He will come and kill those tenants and give the vineyard to others. When the people heard this, they said, God forbid. Jesus looked directly at them and asked, Then what is the meaning of that which is written? The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. Everyone who falls on that stone will be broken to pieces. Anyone on whom it forms falls will be crushed. The teachers of the law and the chief priests looked for a way to arrest him immediately because they knew that he had spoken this parable against them. But they were afraid of the people. Now, before we go into looking at the gory details of the parable, let's, as we have before, consider those to whom Jesus was telling the parable. We read here that he went on to tell the people this parable. But as with a lot of his other parables, he was first and foremost talking to the religious leaders of the day. We're told at the beginning of the chapter that they are the chief priest, teachers of the law and the elders. And so they're people who would have been high up in religious circles. Now, throughout Jesus' ministry, the religious leaders hadn't recognised him as Messiah. They didn't realise that he was truly God, come in human form. And so here, Jesus wanted to show them who he really was. But they didn't want to know. They didn't want to acknowledge that Jesus was who he said he was. And so, Jesus told them this parable in another attempt to show them. And so let's see what happens in this rather dark parable. Well, there was a man who had a vineyard and he decided that he would rent this vineyard out to some farmers. Now he's obviously quite a hands-off landlord because he was quite prepared to be away for some time and let the Farmers get on with the job of looking after the vineyard. But anyway, harvest time came. And the owner of the vineyard, quite rightly, wanted some of the fruit of the vineyard. Now he was being quite reasonable. We notice from the text here that the owner didn't ask for all of the fruit. The 
farmers could have kept some of it for themselves. The owner just wanted some of it. No problem, you would think. However, the farmers thought differently. They wanted to keep all the fruit for themselves. And so, when one of the owner's servants came to ask for some of the fruit, the tenants, the farmers there, they beat him up and sent him away empty-handed. And so the farmer sent another servant to them. And he did the same to that servant too. Beat him up and sent him away. And then a third servant. Exactly the same happened to him. So there were three of the owner's servants. Beaten up. And sent back to the owner empty handed. And so the owner thought to himself now. What am I going to do about this? I can't let these farmers get away with taking all of the fruit and beating up my servants. So the owner decided to send his son. Surely, he thought, they'll respect him. They won't send him back beaten up with no fruit. And so off the son went to the farmers to collect the fruit. And the owner was right. They didn't beat him up and send him back empty handed. No, they did something that was far worse. They killed him. Those farmers were so ruthless. They just sought a business opportunity. He was the son. If they put him to death as tenants, they could inherit the vineyard. So they wanted the son out of the way. And so they took him out of the vineyard and put him to death. So what would the owner do now? His son had been put to death. Well, the owner decided that he would make things even. And so he went and killed all of the tenant farmers so that they wouldn't be able to inherit his vineyard. And then he let the others, who he hoped to be different, take over the vineyard. Now, as you can imagine, when the people listening heard this parable, they were shocked and horrified because we read, when the people heard this, they said, God forbid. Now, as I say, Jesus was talking to the religious leaders, but some of the other people were there listening as well. But Jesus really wanted to challenge these religious leaders. And so after he finished telling the parable, he gave them a quote from one of the Old Testament Psalms. Psalm 118, where we read, The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. And so what was Jesus getting at here? After telling that gruesome story, why did he then quote scripture? In that particular psalm. Well, it points forward to Jesus' own coming into this world. And he would be the stone the builders rejected, which was exactly what had happened. As he said earlier, Jesus was not accepted by the religious leaders. And in the same way as in the parable, the owner's son was rejected and the owner's son, as we saw, was put to death. That is the ultimate rejection. Jesus himself would be put to death. He, who is God's son. Just as those tenant farmers took the owner's son and killed him, Jesus would be taken and put to death. And the religious leaders would be behind it. 
Now, they wouldn't actually do the killing, but they would certainly make sure that it happened. And the religious leaders, when Jesus said that, understood completely. Because they realised then something had to be done with Jesus. Because you read in verse 19, the teachers of the law and the chief priests looked for a way to arrest him immediately because they knew he had spoken this parable against them. They knew full well that the tenant farmers in the parable were actually them. And they would have understood that the servants who had been mistreated were like the prophets of the Old Testament who were often rejected because they didn't like the message that was being brought. And then Jesus himself was the son who the tenants put to death. And they obviously didn't like to hear that. And so they wanted to arrest Jesus. They wanted to stop him teaching in that way. But they didn't actually arrest him at that point. Why not? Because they knew that Jesus was very popular with ordinary people. We read that as Jesus went around to different places, crowds would gather to hear him and to watch him perform these amazing miracles. These religious leaders knew that if they arrested Jesus, there will be an outcry from the people. And then their authority will be weakened. You see, the religious leaders needed the support of the people. But they knew very well that at that point they wouldn't get much support if they arrested Jesus. And so they left it for the moment. And so the question is now, what has all this got to do with us today here? in 21st century Wales. How does a story about someone being killed affect us now? Well, as you've already seen, when Jesus was talking about the son being put to death, he was talking about himself, his own death on a cross. And that death was for everyone, not just those living at that time, but all of those who lived before and after. And that includes us today. Well, how is that? How is his death for us? Well, we need to go right back to the beginning of time, to Adam and Eve, and they rebelled against God. They decided to go their own way rather than obey what God had said to them. And since then, every person born, apart from the Lord Jesus Christ himself, had that streak of rebellion in them. The Bible calls it sin and it needs to be dealt with. It deserves punishment. Jesus as he died on the cross, took upon himself that punishment and defeated the power of sin. Verse 18 says this, Everyone who falls on that stone will be broken to pieces. Anyone on whom it falls will be crushed. You see, that stone being Jesus has the power to deal with whatever comes to him, comes against him. The power of sin, the power of the enemy, the devil, and the power of death. They will be broken to pieces. They will be crushed. And that means that anyone who trusts in him will not be broken. They will not be crushed. But instead, they'll receive life. And life forevermore. And so can I ask you, 
Do you know that life today? Jesus was put to death so that you can know life. So that you won't be crushed or broken. Yes, there are things in this life that are crushing and breaking. But in the end, you won't be crushed forever. These religious leaders that Jesus was talking to, they just didn't get who he was. And so he had to use this parable to show them that he had the power over their lives. But instead of accepting him and the life that he could give, they rejected him. In the same way as the son in the parable was rejected. And so, for all of you who are watching this afternoon, I trust and pray that you will accept Christ and what he accomplished in his death. And then you will know his forgiveness and life forevermore. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you that he was willing to go to death, to take upon himself the sin of the world. We thank you that he was crushed and broken so that we don't need to be crushed and broken. And that now he has the power to crush his enemies and defeat what's against him. And so we thank you that today we can put our trust in him, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, and that we can know today forgiveness for the wrong things we have done and life forevermore. And so we thank you and we praise you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, just to let you know, there'll be no Sunday at four next week. So please tune in again in two weeks time. In the meantime, thank you for watching today. And may the Lord bless you all.